Star Citizen is the biggest budgeted space sim title ever dreamed of, being designed from the ground up to feel like a living, breathing universe with a history. We're warming up the jump drives and diving into how humanity has conquered the stars, and the new issues the human race must face in the year 2942 in this week's Game Lore. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here and welcome to the future. The year is 2942 and humanity has spread amongst the stars, but this isn't some Star Trek utopian future. A lot has changed since the year 2000. Humanity's first real steps in space exploration came in the year 2075, when Dr. Scott Childress and his team at RSI completed the first self-sustaining quantum drive engine, giving our species the ability to move at 1 100th the speed of light. Yeah, I know, slow by today's standards, but back then we didn't have commercially available starships. Those didn't come out until 2140 with the release of the very first one, the RSI Zeus. A big deal for humanity was the first attempt to terraform Mars back in 2120. Sadly, in 2025, the atmosphere collapsed after a chemical miscalculation in the atmospheric processors made the new atmosphere unstable. It happened so quickly no one could reach a sealed environment, costing 4,876 people their lives. By 2157, Mars was finally terraformed successfully and officially classified as an oxygen-sustaining environment, allowing humans to set up their first full-fledged colony in our solar system. But this wasn't enough for humanity. 18 years later, RSI released another new engine, bringing humans up to one-tenth the speed of light allowing more and more starships to explore our solar system. But our little solar system wasn't the only bits of space we had our eyes on. In 2232, we launched the Artemis, a massive colony ship full of volunteers placed into stasis and set on a slow burn course to the nearest star system. Sadly, they never made it to their destination, having disappeared in what would soon be known as the Niso Triangle. Think a Bermuda Triangle in space and you've got the right idea. It wouldn't be until 2271 when the explorer Nick Croshaw would make one of the most important discoveries in human history while exploring the Nesso Triangle, the first jump point. He would be the first to travel to another star system and the godfather of the modern nav jumpers. This system would be named the Croshaw system in honor of the man. With this discovery, humanity finally found its calling and a new wave of exploration began to kick off. This has a profound impact on the human race, allowing us to put aside our differences and unite as a single government with a focus on striking out into the stars. The United Nations of Earth, or the UNE, is born. 58 years later, the moment people have been dreaming about, first contact with an alien species, and the answer to the question, are we alone in the universe, was nothing like we had hoped or romanticized about. Actually, it was really dull. And with that, the first intergalactic peace and trade treaty is set up. Through exploration and terraforming, vast amounts of land and territory is open for the human race. And with Earth being massively overcrowded, a large portion of the population sets off to make a new start at life. By 2523, almost 70% of all human beings live off-world. With this massive shift came another shift in government. With the colonies feeling the need for equal representation in the UNE, they reformed the government into the United Planets of Earth, or the UPE. With aggressive expansion continuing for the next decade, humans ended up making contact with another alien race called the Xi'an Empire. Stumbling into their territory without knowing, we started terraforming their planets. This, of course, caused some serious tension and created a sort of Cold War buildup on both sides. By 2541, humanity made first contact with another alien race called the Tavarians. Though they control multiple planets inside their star system, technologically, they stand about 150 to 200 years behind Earth technology of the period. The United Planets of Earth government decided to annex the planets to, and I quote, prevent them from attacking us and civilize the population. Conflict quickly ensued. During the Battle of Idris IV, a colonel by the name of Ivar Messer ended up distinguishing himself and becoming the face of the war and the pride of the military for this brilliant and ruthless strategies he employed. His fame would continue to go with each one of his promotions and the highlight being to capture the Tavarian leader. 
Riding this newfound popularity into a position of high general, Messer starts using fear of the Xi'an to claim that the current form of government is outdated and weak. This spurs political change in the way of a new political office called the Prime Citizen. First election, which oddly enough would be the last, putting Messer in a position of power. It wasn't long before he was able to completely restructure the government into the United Empire of Earth and anoint himself Imperator, ushering in an age of unprecedented expansion and colonization. In 2603, a Tavarian warlord, Corthal, emerged from the corners of the cosmos with a rebuilt Tavarian battle fleet and launched an attack on the UPE with the sole mission to reclaim Elysium IV, their former homeworld. While it was a sympathetic cause that some humans could support, the UPE refused to give up the territory. The war lasted seven years and touched almost every corner of the UPE. On June 24, 2610, Corthal suffered a catastrophic defeat at the hands of Squadron 42 at the Battle of Centauri. His fleet rapidly falling to either destruction or surrender, Corthal mustered his remaining loyal pilots to make a desperate charge to Elysium IV. Though they suffered an additional 70% casualties, his fleet finally reached the atmosphere of their homeworld. Corthal and his pilots lowered their thermal shields and dove for the planet. If they couldn't live on their homeworld, they would die on it. With this second defeat, the spirit of the Tverian race was broken. Imperator Messer II used the victory to cement his place as ruler of the newly christened United Empire of Earth. It's been a long and bloody road from 2014 to 2942. In the next episode of Star Citizen Game Lore, we dive into the decline of the UEE and set the stage for the upcoming single player campaign, Squadron 42. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more Star Citizen goodness, and as always, watch your six and I'll see you guys next time.